Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. In this video, we'll explore the Kensington range of trackballs for audio editing. Okay, I'm really excited to try out the Slim Blade trackball from Kensington. They were cool enough to send it through to me, and I've got it here on my desk. I've been using it for the last few weeks, and I'm really enjoying it. There's also the Kensington Expert Mouse trackball that I was sent, and this is fantastic too. I got the wired version, but it also comes with a wireless version if you want to use Bluetooth. It can also connect wirelessly via a USB nano dongle, uh, but I always prefer wired. I just feel the latency is lower on it. So it feels really good in the hand. There's an attachable rest pad for your wrist. Buttons are a bit closer together, so I find if you've got small hands, kind of like me, uh, you can reach the buttons easier on this one. It also has a physical scroll wheel as opposed to uh, twisting the ball, as we'll see later on uh, with the slim blade. Uh, so those are a few differences. Plus, the wide version comes with a beautiful grey trackball. Let's hop in to Adobe Audition and find out exactly how this works. So. First of all, it's much more tactile. I can scroll all the way across my three screen setup really easily just with a few motions on the trackball. So really good there. It also pops out as well and it's like a little planet in your hand. It's really, really cool. Um, and of course, it's got digital uh, tracking, some laser technology going on there to exactly motion where you're going. It doesn't pick up all that gunk uh, like mice usually do when you're rolling them across your desk and picking up whatever dust is gathering there. So really like that. Uh, let's get into a uh, multi-track that I'm working on here and show you exactly how I'd use it. So first of all, it's very precise because you can move the trackball to exactly where you want it to be and then you can let go and leave it there and push the click and then move in. So really accurate in that sense. But that's not all. Uh, one of the biggest features I think of any Kensington trackball is the fact that you can bring in this software right here Kensington works and really customize it. So this is exactly how I customize my trackball to get the most out of it. Obviously down here at the bottom, you got the left click and the right click, which I leave as is. But these I totally customize. So I find with my fingers, I tend to gravitate towards the uh, top right button quite a lot. So I want a common kind of action that I'm using in Adobe Audition. So here I would click it, I would go for keyboard shortcut, and I've set up backspace here. If I save that in now, that will just delete things immediately. Up here, I want to copy things quite a lot, so I'll go in here for a keyboard shortcut, and this will be Control and the keyboard uh, hotkey C, Control and C, save that in there, that's gonna be copy, and my top left key at the moment is middle click, but I'm gonna change that to Control and V for paste and save that in. Then down here, these two buttons at the bottom, if I click these at the same time, I really want to undo whatever I'm working on. Keyboard shortcut will be Control and Z, or Z if you prefer, and then click Save, and now I've got everything customized just the way I'd like. Uh, so let's go along here, and let's first of all cut out. I'm going to take one take here, select this bit, top right, boom, done. And again, I can just cut this, top right, boom, and done. And then I can reposition this wherever I want in the multi-track, reposition this here and this here. Uh, so we got something going on forming a bit of a jingle. Uh, now often I like to um, zoom in and uh, this is a really interesting thing. Uh, with Adobe Audition in particular, when I want to zoom in, uh, I will roll the scroll wheel. Obviously trackball doesn't have that, but it does have this and I find either the, the ring finger or the pinky finger is good for just scrolling like this but it's not doing much at the moment. In fact, it's it's doing nothing. Why is that? That's because you need to know the keyboard shortcuts for Adobe Audition to do different types of scroll. So the thing I like to do most is zoom into all the waveforms in my multi-track. So I would hold down control on the keyboard and then if I move the ring uh, here or uh, roll the, uh, the trackball around like this, you'll see that it zooms in nicely to wherever my mouse pointer is. Again, around here, I can just roll in and really get a good view on wherever I want. But that's all very well if I can't actually see the waveforms very well. So this is where I would use the Alt key, or this would be Option, and of course the former would be Command uh, on a Mac. The Alt key will then make my waveforms bigger or smaller like that, so I can get in like this. And then once I'm zoomed in like that, if I let go of all the keys, I can actually then click here and scroll up and down to exactly where I want to be in the multi-track. So now I'm zoomed in, I've got the waveforms nice and big. If I hold down shift on the keyboard, I can then do a fine tune kind of scroll if I, if I need to scroll out a little bit here and just get this absolutely perfect. Maybe tighten this up, move the trackball here, 
move it in like that and I'm good to go. Uh, and now I can very easily hold down control, zoom out again like so, uh, and see the whole waveform that I've got here. We can even play a bit of this. It's country US. Okay, so we got the start of a jingle there and something else, obviously I've signed copy and paste. I really like to do is copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy the start of that. It so that little bit, and I'm going to click both top buttons, that copies, and then I can actually go up to the, the top track here and I can paste in using my top left key and you see how easy it is to just click and paste, click and paste, click and paste, click and paste like that. So that's exactly how I'm using those keys. And then I've got it's country. And then of course on my presets here, I can just do a little pitch shift here, zoop, like that and it's country US. So all those kind of things are available to me really easily using this trackball. I've got copy, I've got paste, I've got delete, I've even got undo. If I just uh, hit the bottom buttons here, I can just undo a lot of my former steps there and go back. So really handy shortcuts, really, really liking it for audio editing. Uh, it's definitely, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you do get used to it, it definitely feels better and more tactile than a mouse. I do like the fact that this comes out and it, it looks like a red planet. And of course you can clean it as well, uh, which is really handy. A few points to note if you're making the change over to a trackball, particularly the slim blade, uh, and I wanted to uh, specifically focus in on this. When you use the scroll wheel, uh, it does make a clicky sound. And that's kind of to show you that you're scrolling instead of moving the trackball to an area of the screen. Also, the clicks on the Slim Blade are particularly loud. That might put you off if you don't like tactile clicks. Me, I like tactile clicks. I like to know that I'm clicking, but this is what they sound like. So there you go. I've used trackballs in my time in radio and audio production studios, so I'm pretty familiar with them. Uh, and I can definitely see why they use them as opposed to a mouse, where of course you can obviously get your hand getting RSI over time. So all in all, trackball is a great way to go if you're doing a lot of audio editing. It also works great in other Adobe Creative Cloud apps like Photoshop. I find it great for video editing as well in Premiere Pro and Rush. So all round, if you're doing a lot of creative work, a trackball may be the way to consider going. Let me know if you're using a trackball and how you're using it in the comments to this video.